So, you met this person who really messed things up for you, didn't they? They really threw you into a tailspin. Things were maybe okay, maybe they were not so okay, but nothing like it is now. The obsessive thinking, the sleepless nights, the agony, the pain, and this insane, desperate drive for answers. What is happening to me? Why is my life falling apart over this person? Well, it's not what it appears to be. You're looking around on the internet too, and the internet doesn't really seem to be helping. And I get it. Everybody just wants to help. Everybody's offering their different advice. Everybody's got a little bit of a different answer. And almost everybody that you come across who's talking about this, they seem sincere, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Things seem to keep getting worse or they stay the same. The obsessive thinking continues. The emotional tailspin You're a walking disaster. Why? Why did you meet this person? And here's another question. <clears throat> Why does everybody got a different answer? Hmm. Let's start with what a twin flame is. Because if we understand what a twin flame is, we should be able to get to the bottom of this. Like, why did I meet them? And here's another really good question. What do I do now? And when we're clear about what a twin flame is, Not only why you met them, but also what to do now. It should be pretty clear. So let's talk about what a twin flame is. Now, <clears throat> what I've noticed, interestingly, is when you look online for information about twin flames, or when you talk to anybody about a twin flame, anybody, anyone, they all say the same basic thing, is that it's one soul in two bodies. Or, you know, it's like the soul split and you're looking for the other half of your soul. Or you're the same soul vibration or something like that, right? So however that looks like, the thing that's the same that Everybody says about Twin Flames is that it's one soul in two bodies. You're the same soul, some way, somehow. However that works, I don't know, but that's what everybody says. Yeah, that is what everybody says. And I would put a very good question to you that may give you some hope here. If everybody is in agreement about what a twin flame is, then why does everybody give you different advice about why you met them, like what the purpose is, and what to do about it? Everybody's got a different prescription, advice to give you about what to do. Everybody's got a different prescription. And yet, the fact remains, Everybody has the same description. Same description, one soul and two bodies, different prescription. Healing, doing the mirror exercise, balancing your inner feminine and masculine, clearing your chakras. And I'll tell you what, my prescription is different too, but here's the thing. My prescription 
is based on the description. Your twin flame is your soul, guys. And what's interesting about that is what that is and how that works, the soul, right? It, it, it's already been proven out. It's it, it, all the great spiritual masters, and I mean the big ones, not some run-of-the-mill guru on YouTube or something like that. Not even me, but the big ones, right? Like, ah, oh, you know, Buddha, <laughs> Jesus, Krishna, Yogananda, Tolle, Spira, the big names. They've been clear all throughout the ages on what a soul is and how that works. And that teaching has been reinforced time and time again by the experience of massive amounts of people millions or billions of humans over time have all reported the same thing. All you have to do is look at ancient texts, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, including the books that were taken out of the Bible, especially those books, the Tao, etc., etc. The soul is consciousness. That's your twin flame. Your twin flame is your soul. Your twin flame is you. The question is, what is you? Because see, today you believe that you are this collection of experiences, of belief sets, memories, a story, a history. Right? You have this identity, and I'm not saying that's bad. That's just what you're doing. That's what everybody does. It's the human condition. We derive our sense of self from the ego mind, the personality. With my Twin Flame coaching students, I call it the identity entity. And that's exactly what it is. It's not really you. It's a mask. The real you is consciousness. Well, now that I've shown my hand, let's talk about this one too. In case you haven't seen this before, or if you have, hey, it never hurts to review, right? So here's another thing that we already know. These are ancient spiritual teachings. This isn't coming from the run-of-the-mill YouTube spiritual guru person. And I'm not trying to put anybody down. Again, I know they're just trying to help. But are they helping you? Before I get to this, let me tell you a story, actually. Let's talk about that. Let's pause right here. Because, see, I'm not here to put anybody down. I want you to be free. And I want your suffering to end. And I know it can. But what is it that suffers? Who is the you that suffers? See, here's the thing about why all the different prescriptions, same description, different prescription. And actually, even the description is a little different because, guys, we already know what reincarnation is. We already know that the soul does that. It incarnates. It reincarnates past lives, future lives, right? This is your past life in the year 1880, the year 1770. This is you and your twin flame. We already know this. And so even the description can get a little blurred. The basics of the description is the same. You're the same soul, but then they come up with all this weird folklore like the soul split and stuff like that. And if you go to all the great spiritual teachings all throughout time, they're not going to tell you that. They're just going to tell you, yeah, dude, the soul incarnates. It does that. 
Real simple, back to basics stuff. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Now let's talk about spiritual gurus online. And again, I'm not here to put anybody down. I know everybody's just trying to help, but I want your suffering to end today. I once hired a handyman to come over to my house and do some work. And he shows up in a nice pickup truck. He has nice clothing on, not like a suit, but like work clothes. But my point is, is they weren't all torn up or greasy or anything, right? And he had all of his tools. And he was also a very nice man. So definitely he doesn't look like, you know, the kind of construction worker that's going to rip you off or anything like that, right? Because you know how hard it is to find, you know, like a good construction worker sometimes, right? Like, how, you know, you don't know who they are and they show up in a beat up old pickup and you're like, oh, I don't know, right? <laughs> Who's this guy? <clears throat> no judgment. It's just discernment, you know. You don't want to give your money to somebody and have them not do the job. Well, anyway, he had all the looks of a legitimate, nice person. I saw him like when he got to work, he was working hard and he seemed like he really wanted to do a good job. Like he was a great, he was a great guy, really. No deception at all, none. But it was kind of like, after a while, I was like, ooh, I don't think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, he would like drill extra holes in the wall. Um, and, you know, like he put the towel bar on crooked, just a little crooked, right? And you couldn't quite see it unless you were sitting on the toilet on the other side of the bathroom. Then you could see it, right? And I just, my impression of him was he meant well. He was a really great guy, honest, hardworking, but not quite experienced, <laughs> right? And so I refer to him as the helpful handyman. I, I kind of gave him his money um, for about half the job. You know, he, he did about half the stuff I wanted him to do. And I told him, you know what? I'm out of money, actually. Um, I'll let you know when I need you to come back. And I sent him on his way. And then I hired somebody else. Now, when it comes to all the stuff about the mirror exercise and fixing your inner child and clearing your karma and balancing your inner feminine and masculine and clearing your chakras, that's all psychology. All of it. And I'm not saying psychology is bad. That's just what that is. That's the mind, guys. That's the ego mind. That's the identity entity. Totally fine. But that's not the soul. That's the prescription that you're usually going to get. And again, even the description is a little different with some of the helpful handymen out there. But... We don't need a different description. <laughs> we already know about reincarnation, guys. We already know that this exists. You don't need to make stuff up like, oh, the soul split. Really, then how come every single ancient spiritual master is going to tell you that the soul is formless? How can you split something that's not there? It doesn't exist in the way that we think of existence in this reality of density, this reality of duality. In spiritualism, the reality of duality is what the yin and yang symbol is talking about. That's the mind, that's concept, that's thought, that's the false self, that's the, the little me, the mind, ego, the story, the narrative, the history, the identity. This is my job. I have got this family. I've got these friends. I've been to these places. I have this knowledge. This is my political beliefs. Whatever. It's a history, a story. The ego mind. And I'm not saying that's bad. That's just what that is. Yeah, well, it's duality, guys. 
They even have similar terms in the realm of science. Science is just kind of starting to catch up with spiritualism. Again, these are ancient spiritual teachings, guys. Hare Krishna, Yogananda, Buddha, Jesus, on and on. All the greats. Now, the soul is completely formless. It's not a thing, and it's not nothing. Nowhere throughout history has any great spiritual master ever, ever said a thing like, the soul can be split. And as a matter of fact, every time one of their students learns the art of transcendentalism, what they experience is absolute wholeness, complete freedom. That's the spiritual experience. Here's another thing that they'll tell you. If somebody was to ask them, hey, you reached enlightenment, how did you get there? They're going to say, well... Once I reached enlightenment, I realized that what took me so long is that I was trying to get here. Really? You mean like healing? Clearing your chakras? Working on your inner child? All totally fine stuff. But that is psychology. None of that stuff is going to get you there. This is spiritual, guys. Your twin flame is your soul. It's very simple, very, very simple. So again, I say to you, the description is basically the same. Some people come up with this kind of weird folklore or a very dogmatic, um, strange belief system about the soul that nobody has ever taught. Nobody, all throughout history, only the online gurus do that. The helpful handymen, right? Great people. But they're giving you psychology and they just put the label spiritual on it. Your true essence is that you are formless, you are whole, you're not broken. You just have a case of mistaken identity. What is you? What is that? You are not the thinker. You are not emotion. We're not saying thoughts and emotions are bad. That's just not what you are. That's the duality of mind. That's our physical and mental universe that we live in. But that's physical and mental. Remember, body, mind, soul. Well, the body and mind, physical, mental, what's up with the soul? Your soul is a fractal. It is a holographic reproduction of the source. Your soul is formless, eternal. It can never be damaged. And again, that has been the experience of people who have embraced transcendentalism, wholeness, oneness, not being split into pieces or any of this kind of weird new agey stuff. So where does that leave you? Well, like all the great spiritual masters have said, when I got to enlightenment, what I realized was taking me so long to get here was that I was trying to get here, right? You're not broken, my friend. You just have a case of mistaken identity. You believe that you are a collection of thoughts, stories, emotions, reactions, experiences, that's not who you are. Who you really are is the formless, timeless essence. And that is exactly why you met yourself in another body. Your twin flame is another incarnation of your soul. It's you having another experience. It wouldn't be any different than if you got into a time machine and went back here and met yourself in your past life. Same thing. We already know this stuff. We already know that the soul incarnates. This is for you to remember who you really are. That's why you met your twin flame. 
And by the way, if you embrace that as your purpose, instead of the physical person, that's when your twin flame does stop running away from you. And they start chasing you a little bit. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So I'm not here to heal the mind or fix the mind. I'm not saying that's bad. That's just not what this journey is, guys. Healing the ego does not cause self-actualization. Self-actualization, again, is when you remember who you really are. The conscious being behind the mind. The silent witness of the ego. That present stillness. The soul. This is a remembrance That's why you met them. It's for you to wake up. It's for you to learn to enjoy life, to leave behind this mental prison. You're not broken. You don't need healing. You're whole and complete today. You just need to remember who you really are. And before I go, I have some suggestions on how you can do that. In case you're new here and you haven't heard me give these wonderful suggestions to you, I'm going to give them again. There's a movie that you can start watching tonight. It's called Samadhi. S-A-M-A-D-H-I. Just watch part one. It's called Samadhi. Maya, the illusion of self. That's the first thing I want you to do. It's on YouTube for absolutely free. And also, start reading Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. You want to get your twin flame back? Do those two things tonight. And get ready for the first day of the rest of your life. <laughs>